This video is sponsored by Squarespace. You can make your own beautiful website or online store with this all-in-one platform. Hey everyone, this video I'm going to be talking about all of your favorite sketchbooks. I made a video previous to this one talking about my favorite sketchbooks and what sketchbooks I recommend for mixed media sketching specifically, but this video is going to cover all sorts of different sketchbooks that all of you recommended to me in the comments and also on an Instagram story question because I asked you to send me your favorite sketchbooks and I made a list of all the ones I could find that were mentioned and I put little tick marks beside ones that were mentioned multiple times. So let's just jump right into the sketchbooks. But before we do, I just want to explain what you'll be watching. I'm actually doing a commission in this video. It's a sketch commission of someone's dog and they wanted me to do it in my sort of sketchbook style with ink and watercolor backgrounds and like um, loose brush strokes and all that stuff. So I'm sort of sketching in this video while I talk about sketchbooks. So I hope you enjoy seeing that. And now onto the sketchbooks. Now, first of all, the most popular sketchbook that you guys recommended was the Talon's Art Creations. I've actually had my eye on these, but I've avoided getting them because they have an off-white paper and I kind of prefer the paper I work on to be more of a natural white just because it's like I find it more neutral and it doesn't make everything you draw kind of feel warmer than it should be but a lot of people do like the off-white paper and I can definitely see why these are popular sketchbooks. They aren't too expensive and they have really nice binding the like fake leather cover and like really pretty colors. I actually would like to try this sketchbook one day. I might get the smallest one. It's really cute. It's like 12 by 12 centimeters, a tiny little square pocket sketchbook. But if I were to use it as like my everyday sketchbook, I think I would want the A5 size. It has 140 GSM acid-free paper. And the only thing is that it's off-white, but that's not really like a total deal breaker for me. It's just not what I prefer, but for the price, I think I would like it. I think I saw it on... The stairs, like the smallest size was like $6.99. So you can't really go wrong with that. And I think it goes all the way up to $23.99 for the 29.5 by 21 centimeters, which is pretty big. And there's so many colors. They're really pretty. Um, I would definitely look into this sketchbook if I were you and you haven't heard of it. They look really cool and I would like to try them, but I wish they made a natural white paper, but what can you do? Another sketchbook that I talked about in my video, but a lot of you also liked it was the Illo sketchbook. And I've already talked about this one in more detail in my previous video, so I'm not gonna talk about it too much. I like the Illo sketchbook. I like the eight by eight one inches. And um, the only thing about it is it's not acid-free paper, meaning it will yellow over time quicker than acid-free sketchbooks. I wish it was acid-free, but I mean, I don't really see myself buying more Illos just because it's really hard to get them to where I live for a reasonable price. The next most talked about sketchbook was the Canton Mixed Media Sketchbook. And this was one of the ones I also recommended. It's that blue sketchbook you see everywhere. And someone specifically recommended the Canton XL hardcover. It's like the same as the blue cover one, but it has a black cover instead. And I guess it's harder than the original one, but I find the original one hard enough. I talk more about the sketchbook in my other video as well, but but I did want to mention it because the Illo and the Canson mixed media sketchbook kept coming up in the comments and in my Instagram post where I asked you guys what your favorite sketchbooks were. Now, another one that a lot of people talked about, and I'm familiar with this sketchbook, but I've never used it, is the Leuchtturm 1917 sketchbook. A lot of people talked about this. It's sort of like a moleskin dupe kind of sketchbook. Well, I don't even know if you can call it a dupe because it's like probably the same price and I'm not really a fan of moleskin too much and I don't know if I'd be a fan of this sketchbook just because I work very mixed media heavy and I use a lot of wet media when I draw. However, that's not really the point of this sketchbook. It's not for mixed media, it's just for sketching. It's very thin paper. You can kind of see through it, but there's a lot of pages. It's very smooth and has a slight tooth apparently. Through my research, I found this out. There's so many different colors, which I think is a really appealing part of this line of sketchbooks. You can get any color you want basically. And it's probably really good for pencil, pencil crayon, ballpoint pen, nothing with too heavy wet media. If you want to work with dry media and just like simple sketching tools, I think this is a great sketchbook. Now, another one that was talked about a lot is Stillman and Burn. I was not familiar with Stillman and Burn before that video, but after that video came out, a lot of people were recommending it to me. So I checked them out and I liked their prices a lot and they have so many different types of sketchbooks for your needs. There's like an alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epilson, zeta or zeta and nova 
So those are all the different lines of sketchbooks and they all have different types of paper, tooth and tones to the paper. Um, I'll put a little chart up to help you. People recommended it to me so much that I actually ordered one after I posted my video and it's going to be my next sketchbook. I got the beta one, I think. Okay, the Stillman and Burn one I got was a beta sketchbook, 8.25 by 11.75. It's A4 size, hardbound, 270 GSM, and natural white cold press slash rough. Um, this is kind of like my ideal sketchbook situation. And for the price, I was very happy with this. I also ordered a bunch of Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils because I realized I like them a lot more than the Prismacolor soft core ones. So I would definitely recommend checking out Stillman and Burn. They have so many options and um, sizes, paper tones, paper type. There's hardbound, wirebound, and softbound. You can basically find whatever you want which I think is why so many people recommended them. So definitely check them out. Then we have Hanamule sketchbooks. Um, someone said the watercolor sketchbook they recommend, and I'm familiar with this brand. I've seen them around. I probably have some of their products somewhere. I'm not sure exactly, um, but their, their watercolor book is 200 GSM, fine-grained surface, 30 sheets. It comes in landscape and portrait, acid-free and vegan and it's natural white paper. This sounds like a great option. It's probably up there in that price range, but you know, if you're looking for this kind of sketchbook, you can get it from Honda Mule as well. Next sketchbook is the Artist Loft 8.5 by 11 sketchbook. They fall apart easily, but you can just tape them up. That's what the commenter said. Um, I actually agree with this. During art school, I grabbed their really big like 8.5 by 11 uh, pink sketchbook and it's hardcover and there's so many pages and there's so much room to sketch and explore. Not really meant for mixed media. I mostly used it with like pens and pencils and I did all of my brainstorming and thumbnails in it and I think it's just a great giant book of cheap paper that you don't feel too precious with and you can use it however you want because sometimes if you get a really expensive sketchbook you feel a little bit more afraid to use it but I never felt afraid to use this Artist Loft sketchbook. And if it falls apart, you can just tape up the spine. You can put stickers on it. Um, I think it's a really good option. They have smaller ones as well. And it's not too expensive. And I believe you can just use a coupon on it as well because it's a Michaels brand. Someone also mentioned the Holbein sketchbook or Holbein or Olbein. I don't know how to pronounce this one. Um, I actually use their gouache a lot and I love their gouache. It's like my go-to gouache, um, but I've never looked into their sketchbooks and it seems like most of them are like spiral bound, but it's like small spiral binding. So it's not too in your way. And that way you can fold it over. There's a little ribbon you can tie. Um, it's a heavy cardboard front. It's definitely a lot different from the other sketchbooks on this list. So if you're looking for something a little different, you can try this out. It's a multimedia pad. Um, it has 28 sheets of high quality, all purpose, 80 pound neutral pH paper, watercolor, graphite, chalk, pencil, charcoal, or pastel. So it just seems like another good mixed media option that you can check out. I can't speak to this one too much because I'm not too familiar with it, but I wanted to mention it. Now for a quick break to thank this video's sponsor, which is Squarespace. Squarespace is the online tool that allows you to build beautiful websites. What I did is I started with a template that I liked and I changed the color scheme and the fonts and I edited the pages to suit what I needed to use my website for and what I use it for is my portfolio and their portfolio and galleries feature makes it really easy to add your art to your site. You don't have to like go into Photoshop and like save out your art at specific sizes to fit on the website. You just upload them and rearrange them in the organizer and then it displays nicely on your Squarespace site. This is also thanks to their automatic image scaling, which allows pictures to be automatically sized and fit nicely on your site. I always like to make sure that on all my social media sites and my website, I link off to all the other places you can find me. So on Squarespace, I link off to my YouTube, my Instagram, Patreon, all that kind of stuff, and my email where you can find me. And then on my social media sites, I make sure I link back to my website. That way people know where to find me and it makes it really easy. If this sounds interesting to you, go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch your website, go to squarespace.com slash gelarts for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks so much to Squarespace for sponsoring me yet again and on to the rest of the sketchbooks. Another sketchbook that a couple people recommended was C. White Sketchbooks, the C. White of Brighton brand. Um, and I looked them up and they have lots of different ones to choose from. There's case bound, wire bound, and staple bound. There's watercolor books and paper pads. So it's sort of like that Stillman and Burn where they have like a series of different types of sketchbooks and you can probably find 
the right fit for you if you look through their options. I'm not too familiar with this brand, but I wanted to mention them. Someone mentioned that Artica sketchbooks could be an Illo dupe, and I'm going to look those up right now. Yeah, they basically look just like the Illo ones. Not that Illo owns like square sketchbooks with an elastic closure. It's heavyweight paper, there's 120 pages, there's a really little one and an 8x8 one. On Amazon, it's only $15.99, so it kind of seems like a very like cheaper alternative to the Illo. And they have a 5-star rating, and there's 700 reviews, so this is probably a really good option. And a lot of the reviews say that it has a really nice cover, really smooth paper, and it can take pens and markers really well and might not bleed through as much as the Illo. So this is actually a really good recommendation and if you're looking for something similar to the Illo, you should definitely check this out and hopefully I can check it out one day too. And also just like the Illo, the paper is not acid free. The next brand, Moleskin, you've probably all heard of them. I've actually not had great luck with their sketchbooks. They have different types of books and I made the mistake of getting their like basic plain journal type of thing and it wasn't really like made for art. Exactly, it just made for like pencils and stuff. The appealing part of Moleskin is their really nice binding and all the colors that they have and it's just like a high quality built sketchbook, but I've never really found it like that worth the hype. Like I, I find other sketchbooks work better for me for a comparable price or less, um, but some people stand by Moleskins and they're definitely great quality. Like I've tried their art album before um, they also have watercolor blocks, which I've never tried. They have watercolor notebooks. Maybe that would fit my work style a bit more. Someone mentioned the Moleskin multimedia paper, but I can't really like find it on their official website. Sketch album art collection. I've actually used the square sketch album art one. I've filled two of those in the past and it was okay, but the thing I also don't like about Moleskin is how the paper is off-white. That's just something I don't prefer working on as an artist, but like a lot of people do prefer that. But yeah, if you like those like minimalistic hardcover leathery covers that are built really well and lay flat sort of premium feeling sketchbooks that are off-white, Moleskin is another brand for that. And make sure you get the art ones and not the like journal ones because the journal ones have really thin paper. The next one are Koval sketchbooks and uh, a couple of people mentioned these. They are premium quality art sketchbooks. They're a small uh, manufacturer producing premium sketchbooks. They use high quality paper from Fabriano and Arches and it's hand binding. So these seem like really kind of like premium high quality sketchbooks. If you want something really nice, um, that's sort of handmade with nice paper. They seem really expensive. One of them is like $65, $49 little ones for 25, 46, but you know, they have really high quality paper and it's a small business it looks like. So this is a cool find to check out if you were interested. Next one is Etcher. I've actually worked with Etcher before a couple of times. They've like kind of sent me stuff in the past. Um, they sent me quite a few things actually. And I have their watercolor block right now and I really like it. They make really nice paper and really nice art supplies. I've used their watercolor books, the 100% cotton ones and they're really nice to work with. I love cotton paper. It's like the best paper you can get for watercolor if it's 100% cotton. Um, it's definitely on the pricier end. There's also the Etcher Perfect Sketchbook, which I've never tried, and someone mentioned that in my comments, and I would like to try that one day. Yeah, I've never tried the Perfect Sketchbook. They're, they have like a gray cover. The ones I've tried were the ones that were watercolor, and they had a white cover that was like fabric. They're really like high-end sketchbooks, really high quality. If you want something really nice, I would recommend Etcher. All right, next one is the Pentalic Travel Sketchbook. I've actually heard about this one a lot in art school. I think a lot of my friends used it or like there was this one person in my class who used it for all of their sketchbooks and every time they finished a sketchbook, they'd get another Pentalic one. They come in different colors on the front. Make sure you get the sketch one and not the dot grid. They're another one of those sketchbooks that come in different bright covers with elastic closures, that kind of stuff. It's on my Amazon, but it's $20 for a three by four one, which I'm assuming is not the actual retail price, but they have a lot of cool colors and I've definitely heard good things about them. So this is a good one to check out. One of the sketchbooks I talked about in my last video was a Strathmore sketchbook. 
the Strathmore Vision and the Strathmore Mixed Media Soft Cover 500 series, which is the 100% cotton watercolor sketchbook or like mixed media sketchbook. Another person recommended the Strathmore Mixed Media Paper Pad. Basically, all the Strathmore Mixed Media series of sketchbooks are pretty good choices if you want a nice quality sketchbook. Strathmore makes tons of different kinds of paper, and I think it's good to look into them. Um, I talked more about it in my other video, but I'll mention it here because it was recommended by a lot of you. Now we have Mossery, and I've heard of Mossery before. They used to be really trendy. Um, they're actually quite expensive, but you can personalize them, and they collaborate with a lot of artists to make beautiful covers, so you can choose from tons of different um, artwork on the covers and I would actually like to collab with them one day, but I've never had the chance. It's a mixed media paper. Their uh, big sketchbook option has 35 sheets or 70 pages. There's also a $32 option, but they only have 11 pages, which is kind of too small for a sketchbook in my opinion. Um, but Mossery is a really cool brand if you want to get something personalized and customized, um, but it is on the pricey end. From my last video, I talked about the Arteza sketchbook, the big A4 sketchbook from Arteza, and someone else also recommended it to me in my like Instagram post, so I wanted to mention it as well. Um, but if you want to know more about it, check out my other video. All right, now there's some that I'm not too familiar with as we go. Okay, the next one is the Modena notebook. Someone recommended this one, and they said make sure you get the one with plain paper so that it's actually a sketchbook. So I assume this is the kind of sketchbook that has more thin paper that's good for pencil sketching, um, which is one you can try out if you want. They have a lot of different colors. Um, the website isn't loading properly for me for some reason, but another one I wanted to mention. Then we have Fabriano Venezia. Venezia. It has like a red cover with a bunch of little like red rectangles on it. Fabriano calls it elegant book made of academia paper, ideal for drawing or tempera. There's a ribbon. It's 200 GSM. It's uh, thread bound. It comes in three different sizes and it's white acid free. I'd also just say like check out other Fabriano stuff as well, but this is an interesting find. I've never heard of this sketchbook before. Next we have Ohuhu and I love their markers and I actually have some of their marker pads. People recommended their marker pad and their sketchbooks. Um, they're pretty thick and there's a lot of paper in them. I can't speak to them too much because I haven't used them much yet, um, but I think I have two or three. Two or three? How many do I have? I think they might have sent me two of their sketchbooks. They sent me their marker pad and their like mixed media sketchbook, so maybe one day I'll get into those, but yeah, I would recommend looking into them if you want a marker sketchbook or something that is more for mixed media. Okay, we gotta do some rapid fire for these last few ones that I haven't heard of, but I'm going to mention them. So there's the gold line 65 pound sketch paper, the 5.5 by 8.3. This is one that someone recommended. It looks like it is mixed media. Um, it's at my local Desayers art shop. It's only $6.99 for the 5.8 by 8.3. So it actually seems like a pretty affordable one. Then we have the Danique sketchbooks or Denik sketchbooks, not sure which way it's said, but it looks like they have a lot of different options. There's like, they have a notebook and journal section with pocket notebooks, classic lay flats, medium, large, medium spirals, large spirals, planner sketchbooks, embroidered journals, um, lots of like stationary and sketchbook options there. The next one is the Midori MD for alcohol markers. I'm not sure if Midori has sketchbook paper or if it's just a plain notebook. It looks like a nice like simplistic, minimalistic looking book um, and someone says it's good for alcohol markers. Then the Paul Rubens watercolor journal. This looks like a good option because it's 100% cotton and 300 JSM, which is quite thick. 20 sheets, um, 7.6 by 5.3. And I'm always looking for good um, watercolor journals and this one is 100% cotton, which means I assume it's acid-free, but I'm actually not sure. And it's only $20, which is like a mid-range price in my opinion. Then the Dina Wakely Media Journal. They're available in three sizes. There's 54 pages. This is an interesting one because the sketchbooks have different papers inside them. In one of these, for example, the uh, the blue edition has a blue denim paper, heavyweight cotton paper, and white burlap, so you can try a bunch of different papers in your sketchbook. That really puts like the mix in mixed media, which is what it says. That's actually a pretty cool find that I didn't know existed. So that's a cool one to try if you like doing like a lot of different experimentation in your sketchbook. 
The next recommended one is the Brustro sketchbook. I've never heard of this brand, but it looks like Brustro has its own website and I don't know what this currency is, but there's a lot of options, but that's another brand to look into for sketchbooks. I found one on Amazon that is a wire bound A5 160 GSM acid free. So that's always good in a sketchbook. It looks like there's four sizes available. The paper is made in Italy. So it looks like they have wire bound as well as hardcover. Then we have the Tavaloza sketchbook or Tavaloza. I found one on Amazon that's the 8.5 by 5.5, comes with a pack of two. You get 100 sheets of 100 GSM, double-sided, hardbound, spiral-bound sketch pad, acid-free paper. So it's a hardcover but spiral-bound, and it looks like it's slightly off-white. It looks like they also have watercolor pads. Um, 8.5 by 8.5, they're square. It has like a red cover, pack of two, um, $22.99 US dollars for two of them, which I think is a good deal. This might be the one that the commenter was talking about. Um, this looks like a interesting option for sure. And it has decent reviews, 4.5 stars out of five, 281 reviews, um, acid-free paper, 230 GSM, another great watercolor sketchbook find. All right, the last one I have on my list is the Grumbaker sketchbook. Um, the one I found is mixed media. It's actually an interesting in and out pages. Oh, I found one that has like spiral bound binding on the inside, but it's like covered. I think I've actually had a big uh, pad of paper from this brand before and it was, it was okay. It was like a huge pad of paper I was using for life drawing. Um, this one is 185 GSM, side wired, 40 white sheets. I believe it is acid free, good for wet and dry media. So you can pull the pages out and then put them back in the sketchbook, which is interesting. And I'm sure this brand has tons of other options. Yeah, I've used their mixed media pad before. I wasn't honestly a huge fan of it, but it's cool that you can pull the pages out and put them back in. And I remember, I think it was recommended to me by my teacher. So some people do like these. Um, they have like bigger ones without the hidden wire that you can pull in and out of the sketchbook. I hope this video was interesting and that you might have heard of some new sketchbooks that you've never tried and some brands that you've never heard of before because there's definitely, I definitely learned a lot from making this video and making my other video and reading all your comments about all the different kinds of sketchbooks that you recommend. And I hope to try some of them in the future. And I'm really excited to try the Stillman and Burn one that I got, the beta sketchbook that I got. Um, I'm very excited. And thanks so much for telling me all your favorite sketchbooks. And if there's more that I haven't talked about, please let me know in the, in the comments because I can always add to the list in the description with the ones that people uh, mention in the comments. And it's like a huge master list of sketchbooks that all my like followers enjoy using. So I really hope you enjoyed this. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed seeing the art as well. And I'll see you in my next video.